I had the guidance of two supervisors. The, my first supervisor was uh, Hirat Umar, uh, a well-known type designer, and my second supervisor was an experimental psychologist because I want to have the combination between type design and between uh, the scientific side of uh, legibility research. Uh, also, there is mentioned uh, thank you to Microsoft because two times I received a university grant for completing the study because, of course, if you're doing legibility research, money gets involved and this is something <laughs> that uh, when you start, you don't have this kind of amount. So this is me. Uh, I'm a graphic designer uh, and I teach graphic design, typography and type design uh, at the Media Arts Design Faculty in Hasselt. And as a design researcher, I have a strong interest in legibility and in type. And uh, this lecture will present you the work I'm most proud of because of, of, over a time of six years, I studied the influence of design parameters and type design, aiming to improve the reading process of children with low vision. And also, I tried to provide insights into the sensoric aspect when uh, we read. So uh, my PhD is a study uh, that examines legibility and carries out a legibility uh, research in the interest of children with low vision. More specifically, this research aims at finding a meaningful sense of legibility within the context of low vision children and seeks to examine which typographical design parameters can influence the legibility for beginning readers with low vision. And finally, my question was raised if these findings can be used in uh, the design of a new font for this target group. Um, here you see the methodology of uh, my design research. So type design, it was always a central point throughout my uh, research and therefore also within my methodology. So the methodology, it starts with a context which is shaped by theoretical research which is both scientific and typographic, uh, and the practical work, which are mainly typefaces from other designers. Um, this context will lead to an initial design that will result in test funds that are used in a subjective and an experimental legibility research. And in turn, these results uh, of these legibility uh, studies provide motifs for a second type design that will lead to the development of a special fund for children with low vision. And using this global, global framework, it is important to note that this study started with an explicit definition of legibility, which I will uh, show off uh, in, in some slides. And uh, it uses methods of measurements that were linked to the specific problems of uh, children with low vision. Also, uh, the test material, it has an uh, inter internal and external validity. I will try to explain more in the, in the following slides. After reviewing a lot of legibility studies, it seemed for me that most of these studies lack an internal and an external validity. Internal validity with, within legibility research, it means that the test material is parameterized. External validity within legibility research, it means that the test material is linked to typefaces that we are daily confronted with. So this slide shows you an example of test material that could be present in real life, which means that the external validity is high. However, if you have a study and you test these two fonts, you can either find the result that, for example, typeface A is better legible than typeface B, but you cannot attribute it to a single parameter. So in fact, you don't know exactly which um, which specific uh, design parameters were helpful. And therefore, you can say that the intern validity is rather low. So here you see an example of test material which is carefully constructed by, man by manipulating isolated parameters like the heaviness of the serifs, the letter width, the letter height. And the result, I, the, this results in a high internal validity but as you can see, these are not typefaces we are daily confronted with. These are typefaces which are uh, made by scientists who are doing legibility research but don't have any knowledge of typography of type design. Um, after uh, the examination of theoretical research and the practice from other designers, 
Other designers, it is shown that legibility properties of fonts can be studied by design parameters. Parameters are design characteristics within the same font that can be isolated and manipulated independently from each other. Uh, so as we saw earlier, uh, these design parameters are related to an internal validity. Most studies on the visually impaired children who are starting to read suggest uh, the use of some kind of uh, heterogeneity with regard to the letter shape and the rhythm of the font. Heterogeneity with regard to the letter shape can be illustrated by making the letters less similar, as you can see on the example on the top uh, left. Heterogeneity with regard to the rhythm of the font, it can be, uh, can be illustrated by the successive letter strokes, which you can see right uh, down on the slide. Also, here you can see another example of how you can visualize the rhythm. This slide, it shows you extreme forms of heterogeneity, uh, which of course they are not working and it was not my pur purpose to test these kinds of uh, fonts. So these two uh, examples have too much heterogeneity, both at the letter level and on the rhythm level. Uh, for designing the test material, I think it's very important that we, or you as design students, that we can have um, something to say within the test material. To create good test material, the internal and external validity must be respected within the parameter design. So the reconciliation between this internal and external validity is possible through an optical correction after applying a certain design parameter. This means that when one certain parameter is applied on the font, little form and rhythm changes are needed to ensure the external validity. During the optical correction, it is ensured that the effect of the parameter on the shape or on the rhythm adjustment is of course greater than the uh, effect of the optical correction. So by using an optical correction in this design study, it is possible to keep the advantage of uh, parametric design studies while maintaining uh, the focus on reality. So an example um, which you see on the bottom of the slide is when you want to make a condensed font, what scientists or scientists will do, they just will squeeze the font. And we as designers, we know that we need to uh, optical correct the curves, the contrast and the spacing. Uh, for the development of the final uh, test material, I started from two existing fonts. And these two fonts, they are the sans serif typeface from Adrian Frutiger and the serif font, the DTL uh, Documenta from Frank Blockland. Using the concepts of homogeneity and heterogeneity, we can say that in general, sans serif typefaces are homogeneous within the letter forms and heterogeneous uh, within their rhythm. With serif, serif typefaces, it's the other way around. They are heterogeneous within the letter forms and homogeneous within the rhythm. The fonts that were chosen to function as the test material were all design parameters that had a balance between homogeneity and heterogeneity, resulting in test material that is both internal and external valid. From the two existing fonts, five derived fonts are designed. And here you can see the two basic fonts. And the curly line uh, underneath the text, it illustrates the rhythm of the font. The first design parameter which has the potential to affect legibility was a variable X height and a variable ascender and descender height. This design par parameter induced a lot of heterogeneity uh, both rhythmically and in terms of letter shape. The following two design parameters, they added contrast within the letter. This happened in two different ways. The first was in a conventional way, which means that certain letter parts were emphasized using the conventional contrast, and the second uh, was in an unconventional way, which means that according to specific literature, the most distinctive character parts were emphasized. These two forms of added contrast 
um, mainly and used heterogeneity in terms of letter forms, in particularly uh, in the unconventional contrast because of less symmetry and less in terms of rhythm. The fourth design parameter induced more heterogeneity by playing with the directions of the, letters, uh, of the letter strokes. This made the rhythm more heterogeneous and to a lesser extent the letter shape. <coughs> and finally, uh, the, the last design parameter, it introduced more heterogeneity by varying the letter widths. This procedure made especially the rhythm more heter heterogeneous but also the letter shape. Here you can see an overview of the parameters that show that I uh, induce more heterogeneity and that no parameter induced more homogeneity. For defining methods of measurements, it was important that legibility was explicitly defined and that the method could be linked to the specific reading problems of children with low vision. And this has led me to the following definition, which is legibility is the ease with which visual symbols are decoded. The test material was evaluated qualitatively and quantitatively, so two different ways. I will explain more. So the quantitative assessment of the test material were based on an experimental legibility research. A backward masking paradigm was used in which the children were asked to read pseudo words aloud uh, that were briefly exposed on a computer screen. Taking into account my definition of legibility, it were mainly the decoding problems, the decoding skills of children with low vision that were needed for the execution of this task. Moreover, pseudo words were used because these specific non-existing words are the perfect carriers for uh, the basic and the derived fonts, since the phonological rules and the convention within letter forms remain, while semantic knowledge and the influence of context are excluded. The idea behind uh, the backward masking paradigm is a bit complicated, but it is important that this task allows for an optimal measurement of the sensorical aspects of reading in function of the five different parameter changes. With this method, we also looked for a time where the child had roughly 50% uh, of recognition of the pseudo words. We didn't want the child to have everything wrong or everything right. 110 visually impaired children with no additional disorders than only the vision participated in the study. They were reputed thanks to the cooperations of centers for visually impaired people in Belgium and in the Netherlands. Also, 54 normally sighted children uh, were, recru were recruited in the regular schools in my hometown. And all the beginning readers, they were in the age between 5 and 10 years old. Here I show you some pictures of how uh, I tested with the children. And you can see that the children were very concentrated during the test. What I did, I told the, the children that it was a computer game and they loved to play it. And thank God the children thought that the game was fun. Uh, also, when I put my timer in another perspective, uh, you can see that they were very relaxed doing it the test. <laughs> the qualitative evalu evaluation of the fonts was done by a subjective legibility research. So the children were asked to rank the test materials, which was 12 fonts, by their legibility. In the meanwhile, it was examined which uh, factors played a role in their subjective judgment by means of dialogue. Now we come to the interesting part of uh, this presentation where I will show you the results. So the results of the experimental legibility research showed that for the normally cited beginning readers, legible words are homogeneous in terms of rhythm and heterogeneous in terms of letter forms. The documenta was more legible than the frutiger for them and within the derived fonts, the frutiger 
the forms that cause more heterogeneity within the latter forms were regularly more legible. The fact that the documenta scored better for the normally cited children is somewhat surprising because the children, and especially the beginning readers, they are mainly confronted in primary schools with a font that looks like Frutier. So Lico's known quote, the readers read the best what they read the most, is jeopardized, for sure for the beginning readers in the age group from 5 to 10 years old. The, also, the belief from teachers that letters for beginning readers should look as simple as possible and should reflect the handwriting is falsified by my study. The result for the normally cited beginning readers also seem to indicate that Cyrus makes letters on their ends more defined with a clear identity. The fact that Cyrus are emphasizing these ends is beneficial for legibility. Research within letter identification showed that the terminations of letters are of crucial importance because they carry the most distinctive future, uh, features. For the children with low vision, they scored a little bit better with the Frutiger than with the Documenta. And on the basis of this, you could expect that homogeneity with, in terms of form is more beneficial for their legibility. However, with the Frutiger and with the Documenta, we saw that in the first sessions and at a very low reading level, the design parameter with the unconventional contrast was helpful and more legible for them. This parameter makes the letter forms more heterogeneous. But the most striking parameters for improving the legibility in terms of decoding for low vision children remains the need for more heterogeneity in terms of rhythm. Within the Documenta font set, so the font with a homogeneous rhythm, the design parameters that made the rhythm uh, the most heterogeneous had the most positive effect on legibility. It appears that for visually impaired children, a more irregular rhythm is beneficial for their reading. The parameter that didn't have any positive effect was the varying X height. For both groups of children and for both typefaces, the serif and the sans serif, uh, this typeface, uh, this design parameter wasn't successful at all. Within the subjective legibility research, the analysis of rankings showed no, sig no significant results. However, the dialogue with the children contained a lot of useful uh, information. The most striking within the subjective legibility research was the fact that the majority of children have become conditions to the fonts they see the most. These fonts they label as easily as more legible. This is a remarkable finding because of these reasons we worked with beginning readers that didn't have much experience with a printed reading material. The effect was also more profound in normally sighted children and with low sighted children that followed regular educations with their sighted peers. Children with low vision who followed a special education with only uh, low sighted children or blind children were less conditioned. So it seems that their judgments reading uh, regarding legibility is less affected. Another nice result of this subjective legibility research is that the children describe the difference between the Documenta and the Frutiger barely in terms of serifs. The, ch uh, the different fonts are often classified to the context in which they are commonly used. Frutiger they used for the school and Documenta they saw in books and in newspapers. Also here convention seems to have a huge influence on, what's, on what was found more legible. Furthermore, it also became clear that the differences with respect to the design parameter with different letter widths uh, and their basic fonts is not seen by the beginning readers. This parameter can be useful for practical use because it induces legibility while remaining invisible. And then there was Matilda. The identified and most important results, together with my own understanding, knowledge, intuition, and ideas as a design researcher, uh, incorporated in the design of Matilda, a font which is aimed at children for low vision. 
A lot of sketching happened before Matilda was born. To read the needs as uh, many children as possible, Matilda became a serif font. This to close the gap between the reading material for children with normal vision and low vision. Children with normal vision made way less mistakes with the documenta and for children with low vision, the difference wasn't big at all. Furthermore, some parameters within the documenta group had the most positive effect on the decoding skills of children with low vision. There were reasons why I tested with the documenta and the frutiger, and the fact that the design parameters show their influence on these kinds of letters, it was important that Matilda was similar in terms of letter width and text color. On top you can see Matilda, underneath you can see the documenta, and on the bottom you can see the frutiger. Comparing to the documenta, Matilda has a bit more irregular rhythm um, because it is a tighter uh, spacing. I will try to illustrate it here. <laughs> the main characteristics of Matilda are wide, open and round letters which have a friendly feeling. The letters are dynamic, solid, constructed and organic. The letters are built on a rather stable and vertical axis. The curves are open and the serifs are asymmetric, convex and concave. There are leaf-shaped uh, terminals to emphasize the letter termination to improve letter recognition. The low contrast in the letters is necessary for easily enlarge or reduce text. Also, if children with low vision are reading in different contrast or colors, we know for sure that the letters remain very clear. Matilda doesn't have a very large X height, uh, so that the ascenders and descenders provide enough room for the diacritics. Matilda is in full development and a growing type family, so it includes a serif, an italic, a bold, and a sans serif. And Matilda is also extended by the design parameters that were most helpful for the children with low vision. Here you can see the two uh, which uh, were more helpful, so the one with the different letter widths and the different direction. Here again, you can see uh, the font with the different letter widths and the font with different directions. Here you can see an interaction between these two uh, parameters because it also would be interesting to know how uh, an interaction would work if it would lead to the same results. And then I have questions uh, myself if I should make a font like this, so emphasizing uh, using unconventional contrast, and we decided to do this. Um, this is only helpful for children with the lowest reading level, um, but if it's helpful, why not design a typeface like this uh, for the low vision children? So and then I come almost to my final slide. So here you will see the the, it, it, this slide shows you the three main purposes of my study, which was, uh, it was necessary to come up with an explicit uh, definition of legibility. It was also a necessity to come up with methods of measurement uh, that could be linked to the reading problems of children with low vision. And when translating these results into a typeface, uh, it was important also that the designer did this. So to be continued, because I'm, I'm uh, setting up new, legibili uh, new uh, legibility research, which is in line with my PhD study. So thank you for listening.